So we're back at these awesome rain trees and I wanted to give you a quick overview of how I organise my climbing gear in the rope bags. So, first things first, we've got the 45 litre rope bag, so obviously the taller of the two, and then we've got the 28 litre rope bag. And in here, I've got all my climbing gear, and in this one, I've got my access line set up uh, if you need to run a separate access line from your climbing lines. So, in the top of this one, I've just thrown in an extra pair of safety specs. And obviously this is the pocket that you put your JSA, your risk assessments into uh, for every job site. And the first things first is I've got a Petzl Vertex vent, my favorite helmet. And this fits in here nicely with um, earmuffs on it as well. We've also got two foul timer throw cubes and these have both got I think 55 and 60 meters of throw line in each and I've got a relatively loaded up harness so obviously Petzl Sequoia um, I've got like a spare Prusik multi-sling attachment on the back of this obviously my work positioning lanyard on this I've also slid in uh, my rope wrench setup and tether, that fits in there really nicely. Hitch climber setup with extra beaners, neck tether, foot ascender and knee ascender and uh, quite a few of these pieces will come off of the harness um, before we start climbing. And there's 60 metres of Donahue's Cougar Blue 11.7mm climbing line in here. So that's everything that I've got into here, as well as a Silky Zubat handsaw. I really like keeping this separate from the actual ropes and harnesses and stuff like that. Just a personal preference of mine, keeping handsaws and other cutting equipment away from climbing gear. So that's in a pocket on the outside. That was what I've got running in the 45 litre kit bag. So it was 60 metres of rope, harness and all the kit on that, helmet and two foul timer cubes. Now for the 28 litre, this is primarily um, for climbing uses for my um, SRT access line as well. So if you want to leave a single access line in the tree uh, for people to get up and then re-anchor, then this is what I use this bag for. Same situation, it's got the JSA risk assessment pocket on the top. It's got the drawstring closure as well, that's lifting it all the way over the outside of the bag. Means that um, like you can put rope in and take rope out a lot easier. So in this bag, this has actually got 100 meters of Donaghy Spectra Speed 10 mil access line in it. I've also got base anchor sling and a Taz Love 3 for the base anchor setup as well. I've also got additional carabiners for clipping like your safety stopper knots for the base anchor setup as well. And I just store these like so. Depending on your work situation, whether you need to just have these bags to bring from the truck onto the job site and then back again so you you don't necessarily need to have the rucksack straps on the back, or if you do need to carry the bags uh, a further distance, so having the rucksack straps are useful, like you've got the options uh, to remove these on both the 28 and on the 45. And both bags have these top carry handles, obviously uh, your loop, your hang loop on the back over here. And the 45 also has like a duffel carry handle as well. So, to remove these rucksack straps on either bag, thread this to the end, and it's got a, uh, a looped over stitch on there. Thread that through, thread that back through the double back buckle. And on the top, you've got these locking buckles. And then also, just pull this 
girth hitch loop of webbing off of the lower D-ring. And you can turn both these bags into like more streamlined versions so that if you're throwing it in and out of the truck, you're not gonna get the rucksack straps caught up.